Are you ready? Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. Well, um, welcome yeah. to the real chat. I'm your host, Mrs. Mute Kanga. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining in and a good afternoon to all of us. Our topic today is child marriages and teenage pregnancies. Whose fault is it anyway? Mm -hmm. And with me, um, I have three guests with me. And uh, to start with, I have Ms. Baliama Olive. She is the CEO of Okaro Atire Cancer Foundation, the director, mm -hmm. Global Youth Network, Uganda Chapter, and the Global Goals Ambassador for Uganda. Hello. Yes, Olive, say hello to the viewers. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for that, Olive. Next is mm -hmm. Winnie Ainem Babazi. She is the founder and team leader for Girl Power Foundation Uganda. And it's a community-based organization in Kanungu district. We need to say hello to the viewers. Hello, Winnie. Are you there? Hi. Hello. Right here. Okay. Thank you so much, Winnie, for that. Um. Our third speaker is Mr. Hello, everyone. Glad to be here. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Winnie, we can hear you. Then we have Mr. Baji and the Wycliffe. He is the public relations officer for the ultimate team. Wycliffe, say hello to the viewers. Hello, everyone. It's a great opportunity to be here. I hope we share more in our subsequent uh, conversations. Okay, thank Hello. you so much. So for those who have just joined us, our, our topic today is child marriages and teenage pregnancies, whose fault is it anyway? And once again, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for joining in, and thank you for giving us the time and the opportunity. To you. So to start with, I'm going to start with you, Miss Baliama Olive. Do you think child marriages and teenage pregnancy is something we are supposed to be talking about now? Oh, thank you, Irene. Um, I, uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity, um, and I greet everyone joining us live from wherever you are. Um, Looking at the topic of teenage pregnancies and child marriages, um, I believe although our focus may be in Uganda, um, these similar arguments can apply to anyone, wherever you are, across countries. Because this issue, yes, it's relevant, and it applies across all countries, races, religions. So whoever is joining, is, joining in, please kindly let us know your situations in our comments and we'll make the session interactive. Um, so going back to your question, Irene, um, this is quite relevant to us. And yes, it's a big problem happening. Yeah, But before we say it's a problem and all that, I think it's best we know what is it exactly. What is this child marriage we are talking about? What are these teenage pregnancies we are talking about? Yeah, yeah. So when I begin off with teenage pregnancies, um, we have UNICEF uh, defines teenage pregnancies as a teenage girl, usually within the age of thirteen to nineteen, becoming pregnant. Yeah. So basically, we are referring to the girls who have not yet reached legal adulthood. Yeah, and this varies across the world. Yeah, yeah. So moving on to Uganda, Uganda has one of the highest rates of teenage pregnancies in sub Saharan Africa, and it's estimated at about 25%. Yeah, but however much we say these teenage pregnancies are happening, 
at the end of it all, we have to look at what is causing them. Yeah. So for teenage pregnancies, I picked out a few causes, uh, mainly lack of information about uh, sexual and reproductive health issues by these teenagers. Yeah. Then currently, we have the trend of social media. Yeah. So you find that the access to social media and pornographic content is quite easy for these girls and boys these days. Yeah. Um, there is decreased uh, supervision from the adults. Yeah. So you find that uh, the girls and the teenagers, boys, they perceive these sexual activities quite early on. Yeah. So we yeah. see that even uh, sexual violence causes these teenage pregnancies. Then we see that uh, child marriages also cause pregnancies, but also a consequence of these teenage pregnancies. Yeah? So this brings us to the topic of child marriages. Yeah? So I say, uh, what are these child marriages? Yeah? So we define uh, child marriages as any form of marriage, formal or informal, whereby both parties or one of the parties are perceived to be under the age of 18. Yeah. But then, uh, although the definition includes the boys, you find that the focus is mainly on the girls because most children married at less than 18 years, they are mostly girls. Yeah. So you find that it's perceived that it's mostly the girls who are affected. Yeah. So when we look at the statistics bit of it, um, worldwide, one in five girls are said to be married before 18. Then over 650 million women uh, alive today were married as children. Then 12 million girls are married off before the age of 18 each year. But like I said before, uh, my focus will be mostly on Uganda, but these are similar arguments which can be carried on to other countries as well. Eh? So according to UNICEF, in 2017, um, Uganda ranked 16th internationally among the countries with the highest prevalence rate of the child, pregnant, child marriages in the world. So you find that, uh, yes, Irene, this is a big problem on our end. Yeah? And uh, when you look at uh, the situation now, the COVID situation right now, it has just made everything worse. We find that teenage pregnancies have skyrocketed, uh, the child marriages have also skyrocketed. Yeah? So when you look at our topic today, like who is to blame? Yeah? Whose fault is it anyway? So I give an example of uh, this uh, latest uh, publishment uh, in June. In June, the statistics presented by the District Community Development Office in Kitgum District, that's in Uganda, uh, it says that about 1,519 girls below the age of 19 have visited a hospital for antenatal care. And this is since the lockdown. Uh, the lockdown started in March 2020. Yeah? So you find that... Uh, the leaders in this district are actually fearing that schools may, may not have female students after the lockdown due to these marriages and these pregnancies, the teenage pregnancies. Yeah. So this is an existing issue. But on the fault on, who's, on the issue on whose fault is it? Yeah, I say blame is in, uh, there's enough blame to go around on various parties, say communities, the parents, the girls themselves, um, maybe I can sum it up with uh, an example. Like there's a recent case, the same district, uh, Kitgum district, whereby a teacher impregnated and ran off with a 15-year-old primary school pupil. Then the head teacher tried to report to the police station to arrest the, the teacher. But the parents of the child come in and tell the head teacher they will kill her 
and even burn down the school. Meaning the parents are probably involved in this deal. Yeah. So my point is there is enough blame to go around. Yeah. We have various parties who are involved and who are to blame for these child marriages and teenage pregnancies. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for the, for that, and um, mm. thank you, Amanya Elias, for the comment. And I think we can keep on the comments that coming in. And then, if you have a question and all that, you can also put it in the comment box, and we'll be able to, to respond to all the comments. Thank you so much, Tushi, for joining us from Thailand. So, back to the to, to the next question. This goes to Miss Winnick. From from your profile, I, I read you survived child marriage, being forced into child marriage, and also you happen to work with teenage mothers. So for you, in your view and from your experience, what do you think drives this, the child marriages and the teenage pregnancies we are talking about? Why is it on the increase? Oh, on the right. Mm -hmm. Hello, Winnie, are you there? Hello. Okay. So, as we wait for Winnie to get back to us, I think her network is a bit not clear. Olive, can you? Okay, Winnie. Did you hear the question? Okay, okay. Hello, so I kindly am... tell us. Okay, I think we are now with you, Winnie. So, what are what are those things that drive the child pregnancies and 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 the child marriages, the teenage pregnancies and the child marriages? What would be some of those some of those reasons? Hmm. Oliver, you I, there? I'm there. I went on a bit. I, is this to is this to me the question? Yes, you can respond to that because it seems we've lost Winnie somehow. Oh. Okay. Um. Uh, looking at our perspective, we we have various causes of these child marriages. Yeah. So off my head, I could say uh, we have cultural causes. Yeah whereby the parents still undermine the girl child, yeah? They look at the girl child as a source of bride, bride price, yeah? A source of income, yeah? Um, so you find that the girls are raised in preparation for marriage. Hmm? Basically, they, they keep them around home, do house cures, domestic work, and the uh, end of it all, they are married off at the earliest possible opportunity, which presents themselves. So I would say culture is to blame a bit, yeah? But then you also look at poverty. So some households, the families are very poor. Yeah? So they look at, like I said, they look at the girls as a source of income, as an investment. So the parents could be like, we don't need to educate these students. We don't need to educate the girls. At the end of it all, they are going to, mar to get married and go to a different household, meaning we are not getting these returns back to ourselves. So in such situations, you find that poverty is also to blame. When someone marries off a girl, he or she expects bride price. And that money, they believe, will let them be well off for some time, I guess. So if you find a family with about four girls, 
Some of them even opt not to work. They just know this one will get married this year, then another year, like that. Eh? Then um, we also look at the communities. Yeah, because in some communities, girls grow up knowing it's it's their what it's up to them. Actually, some of them grow up preferring to get married than to go to school and suffer with books, reading, and all that. Yeah. Now I think off my head I could say that. Um, I've seen a comment. Someone says. I believe some parents are not responsible anymore. They literally leave children unattended to and expose them to the dangers of pedophiles roaming in the vicinity. Yeah, but if if I'm to answer Sharon, you say some parents are not responsible anymore, but it's the parents' responsibility to attend to a child. Yeah, monitor what they are looking at on social media. Yeah, tell them to dress well. Yeah, because some of these fed, uh, pedophiles roaming in the vicinity are attracted by our dress codes. Yeah, they are attracted by the way we behave. Yeah? So parents, also yes, they are they are still to blame, I guess. But to an extent, the girls are also to blame themselves. Some of them just opt that uh, enough is enough. I don't want to do this reading anymore. Yeah. It's a trend. Everyone is getting married. Let me just get married. Someone takes care of me. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Olive, for that. I can see Amanya Elias as he has put a comment in summary. Child marriages and teenage pregnancies are caused by the following. Poverty, weight loss, defending children, lack of information, lack of full parental care, culture, Culture is something like that. Okay, thank you so much, Amanya, for, for that comment. And then, um, Winnie, are you there? Hello? Okay, now, um, let's go. Oh, Wycliffe, Wycliffe, do you think, do you think the boy child, the boy child has a role to play in all this, in like, reducing the child marriages and the teenage pregnancies and the what role is that in? Uh, all right. Thank you so much, Irene. So much, Irene. We, we all know that a boy child is, is, is one of the trigger factors that may lead to to uh, teenage pregnancies, but but still they have the solutions as well. Because on one, if if they engage in a creative art, you know, I'll speak on the basis of, of I coming from a music label because I'm the spokesperson for the ultimate team and we are a music label. But we are trying to merge our efforts so that maybe we can do some charity as as you could have heard or seen on our, on our social media platforms. So we believe that if, if this young boy is, is engaged in, in creative art, uh, like maybe craft work, instrumental playing, or maybe debate or youth talks, yeah, we realize that that could, that could work out. Because this means much of their time will be occupied by something that is of value. Yeah? So if, if this young boy is, is initiated on, on creativity, like with the ultimate team, we... we we make bags sometimes. Um, we make we make so many things. Uh, craft work, something like craft work, yeah. And and, and our partners have embraced that, like 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 Pixel Inca and Genius Nation League. So we, we are trying to combine all these efforts, the industry or creative art, art and social life. Yeah, I think that is the perspective that is lacking in our current our current music music industry, and 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 uh, and, and that and all that. So we believe if, if this young boy is, is engaged in creative art, and of course, the parent must give the backup. And for all these roles that can be played by a young boy, every parent must give a backup, yeah? Because these boys cannot grow on their own. So that they are engaged and they do not have the time to think about, you know, uh, sexual encounters or maybe initiating um, relationships that may not be of value. 
and it's equally important that these boys can keep in school. Just like I told you, uh, these young boys cannot raise fees on their own. Parents must give them support so that they, they play their role. So when they, are keep, they keep in school, they will be busy all the time. I believe parents must have seen the value of school this time around. Because um, as, as, as we, have, we have seen our statistics given from our previous speaker, we see the numbers are overwhelming. And we have seen around 2,300 um, teenagers getting pregnant in around uh, four districts. So that was just a sample. This was uh, given out in, in the daily monitor in, in July. So we realize the school has value. So if, if there is no more school, apparently, it means the parents must take over from that. Mm. So the efforts from the the efforts from parents become an alternative of school at that particular moment, especially right now when we are in lockdown. And two, of course, these young boys must be advised to silence their sexual advances to the young girls. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem, the problem in, 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 in most African countries, parents do not speak out to the facts to their children. They only say, stop doing this. They never say, when you stop this, this is the importance. When you abstain, this is the value. You keep in school, you get a better job in the future, you know. They simply place that kind of, 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 of surface description, but they don't give the depth explanation. Yeah? So I, I think parents have, have that role as well as, as they support uh, their, their children. So whereas we, we, we talk about these young girls, or we talk or blame the parents, this young boy should equally be attended to. Because this boy is, is, is a problem now. And the end result or the effect is generated in a young girl. But most of the times, we have always talked about the young girls or the victims. And we have neglected these boys when actually they are, they, some of them are a problem. Yeah? So parents, uh, we, uh, uh, maybe human rights activists, you know, especially those people who are in, in a position to say something, please do it as much as you can. Otherwise, all I want to say is that this, uh, briefly, these, these young boys should keep in school. They should engage in a creative art, debate, and, 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 and some youth talks. And maybe some, something can surely change, because these statistics are surely overwhelming. Uh, maybe I can stop there for now. We shall keep sharing. To you, Irene. Okay, thank you so much, Wycliffe. And the, I think here is a question maybe you can respond to or anyone on the team can respond to. Sharon is asking uh, who is pregnant mm. with the girls. Are they fellow teenagers or adult men? What does statistics say? Who is impregnating the girls? Winnie, are you there? Weekly. Yes. Uh, now, okay, okay. Thank you. Basically, we, we, we of, of course we have to we have uh, when we try to break it down we have two edge brackets uh, just like Sharon has has, has shown in her comments. Teenagers or maybe adults. Yes, adults equally have have great 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 negative impact on on, on these young girls. But then, whereas we talk about uh, the, 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 the adults, these young girls spend much more time with their fellow young boys. Yeah? So whereas we can attend, to, we can attend to, to young adults or maybe blame them, I think they should be primary first to these other young boys that are always having much more time with their fellow uh, teenagers, because it's possible that a teenager can impregnate a girl, so we can't just neglect them, because it is a factor. Though we don't take it, though sometimes we don't take it so serious, but they have that, 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 that uh, I may call it simple knowledge. So that's why I was still saying these parents should still, they are, should still attend to, to, to their young boys, because they are also a trigger factor that can lead to, uh, to, to, to teenage pregnancies. Back to you, Irene. Okay. okay, thank you so much, Whitley. So does this mean maybe somehow the boy-child has been neglected 
as in while we are trying to empower the girl child, we somehow forget about the boy child. Yes, definitely. That's what I'm trying to bring up. We we, we attend to, to, to young girls much more than we should be attending to to, to these boys because we have, we have realized they are also a cause. Because a fifteen or seventeen year old boy can 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 impregnate a girl. So we should we should speak to them as well. We should speak to them as well as much as we speak to the young girls. Okay, thank you so much, Wiki. For those who are just joining us, um, welcome to the real chat and thank you for joining again. Our topic is child marriages and teenage pregnancies. Whose fault is it anyway? So, Olive, from from what Whitley has said, I believe it's mm. not only the boy child that is at fault here. So, can you help mm. us understand who exactly is at fault? when we talk about child marriages, the increase in child marriages and teenage pregnancies. Oh, so Wycliffe, uh, thank you, Irene. Um, Wycliffe brought in the perspective of the boys as well. Yeah, I would love to say, I talked about the parents, first of all. So I think for now, I, I will shift to the community, yeah. So, um, uh, Sharon asked, uh, is it the teenage boys or these the, the elder ones? So, when you look at schools in Uganda, the girls who get impregnated at school, most of them are impregnated by their teachers, the older teachers. Yes? Yeah. So, for the boys... The boys weekly talks about that. They are fellow teenage boys. They are fellow teenage friends. I believe these ones uh, mostly pregnant them say high school. Eh? But some some schools like primary school, boarding school, it's mostly these older teachers who do that because they spend most of the time with these pupils, especially single schools. By the way. For those ones, it's mostly the teachers. Yeah. Like I initially said, the blame goes to various parties. Yeah. So for the community, yeah, you find that there are expectations in the community. Yeah. There is pressure for people to get married. Yeah. So the, you see their eyes everywhere. When is she getting married and all that? So in these primitive, traditional communities, as girls are being raised, they have it in their perspective that they're supposed to get married. So they keep looking at you. When is she develop, starting to develop breasts? When is she starting to get the menstrual cycle? Yeah. Then they start the planning, yeah? like the setups. Yeah? So you find that communities and traditions are also to blame. Yeah. I think that's it for now. Back to you, Iron. Thank you so much. Um, Wycliffe, do you have anything to add on whose fault it is? <laughs> yeah, um, I, I simply want to start from, 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 from where our previous speaker started. But, but still, I, I will still focus to, focus to my role here that uh, some of the, of these things, a pregnancy may, may happen in, in, in moments when you don't have basic knowledge, yeah? Mm. Because your target would be maybe to have pleasure, yeah? Mm. And then, but, but you, never, you never think about the consequences that may, may, may come out, yeah? So I, I think I, I still want to, to say that uh, it shouldn't only, of course, be a, a parent's role to speak to their children, but everyone's role. Because these young boys or girls uh, have great value ahead uh, and have a great, a, a, big, a, big, a great future ahead of them. So if, if there is anything wrong happening to a young girl, if their parents do not act quicker, you as a neighbor or a close relative could do something for them. Yeah? But still, I want to say, uh, though these, these, these young boys... Uh, are taken light, are taken, taken as a light, light taken as factor, factor in teenage pregnancy. pregnancy. They equally deserve some, some basic knowledge, yeah, that, that is saved, of course, 
So that maybe we, 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 can, we can stop those issues of accessing uh, pornography online. Because whenever we deny these kids uh, 